Hey, Patriot Nation, this is Mr. Brower, principal here at Veterans Memorial. Just wanted to give you a short update on uh, what we are going to do with our plan of instruction for the second nine weeks. Uh, this will actually uh, start on the 2nd of November. Before I get started, I, I did want to say thank you. And uh, I'm saying thank you to all of our teachers, all of our students, and our uh, parents. Uh, we hear you and we are, uh, our ears are open. We are ready to uh, change because as educators, we always strive to make improvements. And uh, I will also be on uh, next week, Thursday at 6 p.m. We will hold a Facebook Live and I will go into more in depth in, in what we're about to explain here uh, and try to make sure that the students and you parents uh, and our teachers are all comfortable with what is to come. To start off, I, I wanna just cover uh, very clearly that our in-person instruction is going to continue. It's not going anywhere. Our virtual instruction and in Zoom, uh, that will also continue and that's that's not going anywhere. Uh, how it looks may change, but we, we definitely will be offering all of these uh, same services that we have. Uh, students, have the option to be completely in person and students also have the option to be uh, virtual if they if they wish. Uh, we do want better for our students and so we are going to make a change in the way the instruction is provided uh, and we think that will benefit both our in-person and our virtual students. So before I go into what the change looks like, I wanna kind of cover what the, the current instructional setup has looked like here at Veterans for the first nine weeks. Uh, our instruction has been the, the teacher is teaching to the Zoom. They're seated at their desk. Uh, they are talking to the screen, sharing a PowerPoint. There, there's little to no movement. And uh, there really is no difference, a very minimal difference between the in-person students and the virtual students. Uh, matter of fact, the only difference has been the in-person students are still in the room. So when the Zoom gets turned off for that period, they, they still can raise their hand and ask a question. But in large part, the in-person students had their, their Chromebooks open and were watching the same Zoom that the teacher 15 feet away were, was providing. What we're going to do is we, we asked ourselves, are we really getting the most out of our in-person and our virtual students? And, and the, the simple answer is no. Uh, we, we want to introduce some subtle changes, uh, nothing, nothing major, but uh, we want to introduce some changes that are going to maximize the, the effectiveness and the result to our, to our students. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask our teachers just to start teaching authentic lessons, just like all the kids were there in person. That means we are freeing up our teachers to move around. Uh, teachers will not be zooming from their seat. They will have movement, be able to use body language and show emphasis uh, to the important parts. We will have true interaction, teachers roaming around the room and being able to actually interact with students. Uh, we, will, we will utilize the, the known best educational practices to maximize our instruction. Now, I do understand that once we kind of pull the in-person kids off of the, the Zoom and, and allow them the direct interaction with the teachers, that the virtual students may not be able to hear what those students are asking because they then don't have a mic. Uh, our teachers will repeat the, the questions that are asked so that any student that is virtual uh, can, can hear what is being asked on that Zoom and uh, be able to benefit from that interaction. So what the change really means to us is that the, the Zoom will still be open for the virtual students to, to view live. However, we're not going to make it 100% requirement anymore. One of the, the key feedback pieces that we have heard from from parents is some of our some of our students are watching younger siblings. Some of our households have multiple students uh, sharing the same internet connection or same device. And so we're going to kind of allow uh, synchronous live streaming. The, there will be a Zoom open 
for students to view live, but the teachers will also post the video onto the Canvas. So students that for whatever reason are choosing the asynchronous instruction can watch it at their leisure later that night and then complete their assignments and, and the daily checkpoint before 11.59. What you will see on video will look different. What you will see is teacher moving around the room or the teacher writing on a whiteboard, the teacher actually having authentic interactions. Uh, it will no longer be a floating head in front of Zoom. We understand that uh, the resolution of the, the webcams may not be uh, sophisticated enough to, to pick up everything that's written on the whiteboard. Uh, so we are asking the teachers to either uh, post an electronic copy of the notes or what I think is even better is use a student uh, set of notes and copy that and upload it because truthfully students learn better from other students. So the, the, the in-person students and the virtual students will still get the same instruction, same notes, same everything. So what are the benefits to doing it this way instead? Well, if you're an in-person student, you get your teacher back. The teachers can use all the different activities that they were trained and uh, learned through professional development to implement. And I think the varied strategies that the kids will see in person uh, are going to benefit them. If you're a virtual student, you get to see real, live, authentic instruction happening instead of a Zoom. Uh, you'll still be able to interact with your teachers and attend the live Zooms if you're able. You can, you can uh, participate completely asynchronously if, if you need to, uh, but the option is always there to, to be on Zoom at the same time. So how can virtual students really interact with a teacher if the teacher's roaming around the room and not necessarily able to see chat and things like that? Well, three times a week, the teachers will dedicate time to be on Zoom the last 15 minutes of class to help answer any questions there may be. Teachers still have their daily virtual office hours to answer questions live. And then also we have the discussion board feature in Canvas where if a asynchronous student watches or a virtual student watches the instruction, they then can post a question and answer other student questions in the discussion board. This has two benefits. Number one, the, the students have various means to ask questions and get answers. And the other benefit is our virtual students now have an opportunity to have some interaction with the in-person students. And, and that's definitely a benefit. So what's the catch? Well, certain classes may require live Zoom or in-person attendance. Uh, these are most often opt-in courses, uh, such as when you went into cosmetology, you realized you were gonna have to probably uh, be, be Zooming live because it's a performance and you need to be judged on how, how well you do uh, your job. Uh, some fine arts, if you're in band or choir and it's a performance day, you may be required to either show up in person or be on the live Zoom. Uh, advanced placement and dual credits uh, classes, th those are classes you're opting into. They're rigorous and they're, they're quite simply is no uh, replacing the interaction that is live with the teachers. So uh, you can most definitely expect that they're going to need you to be, be connected during the class time. Uh, other classes could be like resource classes, um, art class. If you're doing pottery, you probably need to be able to have the teacher, uh, you know, give you feedback live instead of waiting till the next day. Uh, your pottery will have, have dried up by then. So there are um, certain courses. We will be emailing out a list of all of these courses that, that uh, would require um, either every day to be live or certain times throughout the, the week or uh, nine weeks to, to be live. So uh, I, I really thank you for, for watching this short presentation. Uh, I'm excited to see the, the increase in instructional engagement. And uh, I just want to thank all the, the students for your effort. I know this has been different and I know you didn't ask for this, but uh, I really appreciate the, the effort you're showing. And uh, parents, I, I'd like to thank you and encourage you to join our Facebook Live next week, uh, Thursday, 6 p.m. 
and uh, have a great day.